Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and this is for the very very beginner Dremel Carver. Um, this is a piece of fence board. It's new. You can use an old piece. It's a five and a half so this would be like a one, a, they'd call this a one by six. You can use a one by eight, a one by four, whatever you want to do. You can also use a thicker piece of wood. I think a, maybe a thicker piece of wood would be better for this because this isn't even a true one inches it's like three quarter inches or whatever so and it's 15 inches tall i just put that on there for you guys to see so a youtube subscriber and a very polite lady got a hold of me she she was in the group carving fusion world of wood carvers on facebook and um she got a hold of me and she asked me if i could car carve a raccoon in a nuke with the dremel beginners and i said at first i says oh, i don't think so i don't i forget but anyways i said yes I, I thought about it just the way she went about it her name's nicole newman uh new nugen sorry if i it's n-e-w-g-e-n -E nicole nugen sorry if i said that wrong nicole but she um you're very polite and the way you went about it i'm gonna make this video for you and there's a good chance it's not gonna work out because i've never carved a raccoon um my buddy Kevin, Kevin, Uncle Kevin, Ryan Cook's best friend, did talk to me when I was chainsaw carving um, raccoons. He goes, raccoons are pretty simple to carve. You know, if you're carving a bear and it doesn't look like a bear, paint it and it will look like a raccoon. So there's a tip for all you beginning bear carvers. So I got my buddy Lawrence to print these out for me. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, you know, so I got them to print because I, I don't know how to make things scale so this is going to be a nuke this is r a real flat carving you know like you don't have much depth in here there is way to make depth you know like the raccoon's nose sticks off farther so i could possibly glue on a piece of wood like if you look at its nose it's like a triangle there right I could possibly glue this piece of wood on and make it so his nose sticks farther. But we're going to try and do this. This would be like a flat plane carving or something like that. And I think, um, that, well, there's gonna you're going to have to paint it. Now, if you look at these two, these are two different raccoons. So the one where my thumb is right now, his face is looking at you straight on. So you always want to take, when you're using, and don't think you're ever cheating by using pictures or transferring pictures because even professional artists do it too right we're just getting the size of the outside of the raccoon for the scale transferred onto the wood and we're going to be using this carbon paper you can get this on amazon right so back to the picture if you look at these two pictures this one where i'm tapping is looking straight on straight ahead you can see its bottom lip there right the top one here is kind of looking down so you don't see his bottom lip that makes sense to you so you know even when you get pictures of eagle heads and you say you say you google eagle head side view you got to make sure it's a true side view like it's like it's perfectly sideways and not tilted a little bit because that can really mess with your carvings too right so i think because this is such a shallow carving and underneath this this um, nose hair is like where his nose comes out i think we're going to go with the top one it will be simple for us to do if I had a thicker piece of wood, I could do this one and we could incorporate his bottom lip there. But I don't think we need to. I think this is good enough. So um, what I'm going to do is put the camera on the overhead and um, start transferring this on. I'm going to be using the RAM Cube Carver today. You guys, you do not have to have it. It's a great tool to have. But, you know, so you got your Dremel. This is a Dremel carving. I'm calling this a Dremel carving video. But why I'm going to use this for the video is because, well, it's not as loud. And it doesn't throw as much dust as a Dremel. And it cuts faster, right? But, so this is, this definitely is a Dremel carving. Okay, I think I've gone over everything so far. And I know this right now, I, I shouldn't, it looks like a birdhouse template, right? But so the outside, we're going to make this look like wood. We're going to cut it so it doesn't look so uniform too, right? You got to think it's a tree with a raccoon inside the, oh, sorry, not nuke, nuck. It's called a nuck. Yeah, somebody I know said, Jordy, it's a nuck. It's not a nuke. When you say nuke, it sounds like a friggin' bomb or something. Whatever. Okay, so I got the camera in the overhead. So usually with these fence boards, you get one side rough one side smooth i like to do it on the smooth side because when you're using your pencil or pen to transfer the image on it's just a lot smoother there's no bumps and it you just get a better transfer so here's that here's the raccoon and here's the transfer paper 
so I cut them at the same size. So right now what I'm going to do is decide where I want this raccoon in the neck. So I think it's probably good right there. So now we want to decide how we want to, before transferring it, how we want to put our, like these edges, we don't want these edges to be so straight. We want to give these edges a little bit of texture and bend, right? We don't want nothing to be straight. We want everything to be moving, right? So here's the side face of the raccoon. So let's just kind of go, um, give it some cracks there. And we'll go like this, give it some cracks here. These cracks will be carved different. See? Boom. Very good. Okay, so where's the transfer paper? Got to make sure you put the nice the transfer side down. So we, you know, the pro chainsaw carvers, they'll just use like uh, projectors. I got one. I just don't use it that off the projectors to get the because this way you're getting this outside scale of the raccoon right it's easy I don't carve much wildlife because well I'm just I'm not good enough to I'm sure I could if I tried and did it over and over again but I just you know I'm just like you guys I want you to know that I'm just like you guys and maybe I have good ideas once in a while that's about it and I just do things repetitive, 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 over and over and over again. I am a little bit under the weather right now, so if you guys hear me go like, <coughs> on this video, I'm saying sorry in advance for now. Sorry. Okay, so, we got his ears. We got a red pen here. You could use a pencil, pen, whatever you want. I like to use the pen because it's got the, the ball on the bottom. It kind of rolls a bit better. So, let's do his ears first. So then we'll go like that, and then we'll do a line here so we know that's his ear. And then his head goes behind his ear. Okay, and same thing with this one. Sorry, I'll try and keep it so it's on. Okay, then this ear kind of goes like this. This is going to be very simple, and I don't even know if it's going to work. And I really don't care if it doesn't work, because this video is basically showing you guys about the steps I'm taking. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's the bottom line. But at least you'll see what steps I'm taking to make it easier for yourself. So there's the outside. Well, see? How the hell is that going? Got to go like this. So there's the top of the head. Make sure you push fairly hard on the thing. So now, the bottom of the lip. Let's just follow... His nose. Then we'll have a little dot here. A little dot here. For his little nostril, nostrils. The eyes. Okay. Um, so let's do this white here. I might as well do the black too. We'll have the, we'll save this picture for reference when we're doing the carving so we know what the lines are stand for, right? Like I'll pin it to the back. So, and then we got some, we got a line going up here. So there, I think we, I think we're good to go. Um, little whiskers, but we're not going to get that detail. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the pen and we're getting shadows and stuff here, but you guys can see my point there. So let's hope that I pushed hard enough. Okay, so there's that. Well, where's that? See, if you look at this, compared to this, well, where's this? Go like this, then we'll go like this. There's our raccoon face, right on top of the five and a half. Good job, Jordy. Yep, good job. Okay, so you can see what's going on there anyways. We got it on. Looks more like a bear than anything. So what I'm going to do now is I got to get one of those aluminum, not, every, I say aluminum cutters every time, but one of these cheap Chinese cutters, the three ones. 
I just ordered some new ones and um, let me find a big one here to show you for example okay so here's a bigger one that's dull but I'm gonna go on along the outside of this and I want to say too like if I cut through here with it because you know you're gonna have layers so this the outside will be your first layer your raccoon will be the second layer and the background will be the third layer so the, the, the face of this carving will be the, the outside of the tree will be the closest to you. Then the second closest to you will be the raccoon. And the third closest will be the background. Well, if I cut through this background and, you, you know, it cuts right through, it doesn't bother me. Because then it will be like a negative space carving. It's okay if, if it happens, right? Because like I said, you don't have much depth in this piece. But this is such a thin board. This is lots of carving. To get all this wood taken out of here and to, to get all this stuff you know i could take it outside and do it with my chainsaw quickly but that's not what it's about you, most of you guys don't have chainsaw carvings and we're going to use the bits so let me get the proper bit on my um dremel i'm just going to call this a dremel today let's get the proper bit on the dremel and um start cutting out outside of this raccoon and outside inside of this line okay okay so i got the bit in the hand piece. Um, I do want to say that for straight cuts, because what I'm doing is a straight cut with this, right? So you can also use these um, these wall tile cutter bits work really good too. Uh, Roto Zip makes one you can buy at Home Depot. Make sure you get the one eighth one for your Dremel, or you can buy these package of these ones on uh, Amazon, and it's, it's cheaper to buy these ones than and look how much more burrs you get than buying just one at um, uh, Home Depot. So I suggest these ones. So what I'm going to do is turn the fan on here, cut on the outside of this um, nut, and I'm going to cut on the outside around the the um, raccoon. I keep I want to keep on calling it an owl because I carve so many owls and nuts, but I want to carve deep here too, so then I can somehow round the this little friggin' I was going to say owl raccoon. If I called owl in this video, sorry in advance, but it's a raccoon or it's might look like a raccoon we just don't know so three two one ignite the fan This is a uh, western red cedar by the way. You can use pine or whatever type of wood you have. So that's done. Now let's go around the um, raccoon. Friggin' shadows. Shadows, I tell you, shadows. <sighs> okay, so since I got this bit on here, I can start, you know, this is more like a using a chisel, so it's really, you can chip the wood really easy with this. See, that's going with the grain. Like this is going with down the stairs. But when I go the other way, I'm going against the stairs, against the grain. Well, anyways. So I can start making some deep cuts here to make this not so straight. So I can do that after. So now, removing the wood inside here, let's try this. You see how it's kind of it's kind of chippy. If you do take your time, and for the very beginning Dremel carvers, you know you just kind of go with the grain with this. See how that's chippy, like how it chipped out.
Okay, so that edge is all done. So now it's it, now it's good time for me to switch burrs. Okay, I'm actually going to use my Dremel for hogging this out. I think I'll use the uh, dr the Cutsaw Extreme Flame Burr. You guys, if you want to get these Cutsaws, just go to the description below. I'll take you to the Cutsaw site. Get these burrs. This is the Cutsaw Extreme Flame Burr. I'm going to go along in here and get rid of, take some more of this uh, background wood down so this sticks farthest off the piece with the outside too okay so we got the bit on there I'm running a Dremel 4000 with a Dremel flex shaft for the very beginners you know it's really good to get the Dremel flex shaft because it's like carving with a pen it's like holding a pen when you're carving instead of holding the whole Dremel itself So now what I'm trying to do in these corners here, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's little, like right there, see that? That's a little cut line from that tip of that uh, three-point cutter that I used. So I'm just trying to carve so you don't see those cut lines in there. See that line going this way? Let's just get remove all of that. And this part, I'm feathering it down. So like, here's your raccoon face. Looks like a wolf. So it's ta I'm tapering it down into there and I'll slowly do that. But I don't want to lose these lines. It's very important that you keep these lines on here. We can also, we can get the transfer paper again, put it back on, trace it. But let's save ourselves from having to do that. Okay, so once in a while, because we don't want this edge so straight, we can, if we're getting bored of doing this, we can switch it up and kind of... Okay, so... So how about I get this all done and then I'll be back, but you guys can see how I'm going to... You guys will see what I mean when I when I come back. I'm going to put some music on for a bit and put my desk mask on. Okay, so that's what we got so far and I hope you guys were able to follow along. So what we need to do now is some undercuts. I mean, an uh, undercut is to bring shadows. You know, I know this Mac raccoon's head would go farther back into the curve into the if it was a real nook and a a nook and a friggin tree with a raccoon in there his head would go way back but it, this is not real this is like a painting it's like a carving so what we need to do now is and the, everything's just my opinion everybody this is one of these cheap chinese cutters again i'm going to go along and underneath here so the, here's the outside of the wood i'm going to go along all the edges and undercut under here Okay, and I'm also going to undercut underneath the raccoon's head and down here too. So that way when we're working on our background, we'll call this the background, okay? When we're working on this, this separates the background from the edge of the wood and it will give create shadows, right? So it will, ex it will separate the raccoon's head from the back of the wood.
So what I'm going to do is I got this Chinese cutter. Then I got, I can't find the burr that I'm looking for. That would be great. Um, taper burr. Cuts all. Then I got this um, diamond burr to clean up the cut mark because when you do undercut marks, when I when I get this burr in here and I do an undercut, it's going to leave a cut line. So I'm going to do this to feather out the cut line. And then if I need to use something like this, come on, zoom in. If I need to use a cutter like this, this is a cut saw to smoothen out the background, make it flat. Um, I'll do that too. So undercut, smooth out your cut lines. If I need to use this to smooth it out more, I will. All right, all right. Okay, so I had to make my burr stick out farther. So you don't want, if you have to make your burr stick out farther to be able to get in there, like in here and stuff like that, you do not want to be running your handpiece Dremel or whatever it is at full speed. Turn it down because these are not meant for full speed, okay? So for the very beginners, you always try and keep these burrs tucked as close into your handpiece as you can. But I can't get in there, I tried it, so I had to pull it out. And I have to turn my machine way down. Because if you run this like this, full throttle, this thing's going to start spinning. You're going to bend it. You could even break your, the bearings inside your handpiece. So this is kind of, you just take your time. And you'll slowly see the you'll slowly see shadows start to pop out. Like right, right, right here. See that? You can see all the shadows now. So there's some areas I'm having problems getting into. So this is where I want to turn it off. Put a new burr in here. I'm going to use this cut saw with the flat bottom. Okay. Actually, we have to make it stick it out farther to get in there. It's just about having the right burrs and the right tools. See how I just fixed that problem? I get in there no problem now. Good enough for me. Okay, I thought I'd stop right here. And uh, also I want to say throughout this video, you guys are going to hear like different mics. I, I got two different mics. I have to use one for the noise reduction when I'm carving, then another one for when I'm just talking until I get it sorted out. So the, the undercuts, okay? Doing the undercuts, like look at that, right about right there. See that cut line in there? See that bump? I still need to take that bump away. See it? And right down here, look at all, see how it's bumpy like that? That's not smooth. We might be able to blend that in. I'm talking about right here. Sorry, sometimes, most of these videos, it's just me uh, thinking out loud. But you see, you'll see it's bumpy. See that? See those, you can see the cut lines. The, the more that you take those cut lines away and taper it back, meaning tape Taper it down nice and smooth inside there, right? And then feather it all the way out here. We got we got to remove all this wood anyways underneath his nose. So smooth it out. But we'll do that after. So now we need to start working on the raccoon itself. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. So 
like I said, this guy's not going to have a bottom lip. This nose sticks farthest off. You, you know, if you want, you can even print off a side view of a raccoon's face to see how it works. But I kind of get this. So his nose here would be sloping back this way. Pretend we're looking at this part right here, here and here. It'd be sloping back this way. But underneath here, it's just, it's sticking up above his neck. So all we need to do, really... I think if you look at this picture, if we go like this, go like this, we're going to have to redraw some of this on. I'm going to remove the wood underneath this nose part. I'm going to do a straight cut right here, right? Straight cut along this line. Let's go like this. Right here, and then remove the wood down here. And this is how you're going to make the nose look like it's sticking off farther. And then once we have that depth established, then we can cut here and his eyebrows. We'll cut this in. And, it, you know, I think basically the bottom line, bottom line with this bullshit, not bullshit, but whatever is, the better of a painter you are, the better it's going to look. You know, you could leave it like this. You could paint, start painting it now, and it's done. But we need to give it hairs. It's a wood curving. We need to give it different textures. But let's try Let's try our best. We also need to push these ears back. So I'm going to cut on this line. Another thing too, like I said earlier in the video, you got to stay to your, true to your line. Like, look how much smaller this ear now is than, smaller than that ear. But it's okay because I cut it off because I'm stupid. So let's cut under here now. Remove some of this wood. And then we'll take the ears back push them back then we'll just do it i'm just gonna carve live i might speed it up actually you know i'll i'll just do real time carving you can see what's happening and i'll try and talk through it i gotta drink some coffee this is stressing me right out stressed out big time to the max okay so i got this uh, this uh three point cutter back in you guys these are in my amazon store i think you get like five different sizes for maybe 10 bucks this is becoming one of my favorite bear burrs. I'm not going to lie. I carve uh, the wood, wood spirit eyes with these. And uh, they're, yeah, like I said, they're becoming one of my favorite burrs. Anyways, let's uh, ignite the fan and let's see if we can make a raccoon. Oops, just turn it up. Switch this out for the extreme burr. Where's my Dremel? Where's my Dremel? Okay, we got so the cuts off flame extreme burr on here. Kind of round the face off a bit. Let's do the ears. So cut, remove. It's called pushing the ears back. Okay, let's round this head a bit. You gotta push the ears back more than push the ears back more. Cut. 
remove. Cut, remove. Hey, we gotta we gotta do under here more too. Remove all this wood in here. Get rid of your cut marks. Okay, so where's the pen? So, I'm looking at the raccoon picture now too. So that's like that, this goes like this. Um, this goes like this. This goes up like that. And then it comes, just look at your picture, like that. So we still have some more, we definitely don't want to cut through the raccoon's hair here. But we do have some more room to do it, but what I'm going to do now is, well, I'm going to cut along this line this way and taper this nose in. And then we'll have to remove some of this wood. Okay, so wish me luck. Okay, spin it all. Uh, okay, now we're safe too. This is my first time doing this, everyone, so. Now we'll start removing the wood, the, the wood beside the nose here. I did something wrong. Slope it in. Whatever you do, don't be a Jordy. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Anyways, carry on, carry on. Well, Nicole, I don't know what to say, but I might just have shit the bed on this one. <laughs> Lots of you say in my comments, I shouldn't say that I don't care. Well, here's a perfect example is I just don't care now. I do care. But I don't care because I, I, I do want to look like a raccoon for Nicole's sake. But if it wasn't for Nicole's sake, I'd carve this into a freaking wood spirit raccoon. I don't care. That's what I mean. I don't care. So. <sighs> my problem with this is I think after you paint this and stuff like that, it possibly could be a raccoon. My problem is, if you look at this picture, and then down here, like, I should have put this face lower in this thing here, because what, I guess this will just kind of be, it's, I'll have to paint it dark down here. And yes, I cut through, don't care. Gives it a bit more character. Mampa, concave cutters. 
If you guys don't have these mampa cutters, you can try and cut your eyes in round. Or you can even use fake eyes. If you can't get them black, then paint them black. You know, you can get those cheap fake, fake plastic eyes. So here's the concave cutter. I got it in my Fordham. This runs too slow for these eyes. And another thing too is I'm getting pretty friggin' thin here. So I don't want to burn through the eyes. Depth. I think when you're doing a piece like this, my true opinion, focus more on the painting part than trying to block everything out and make it look like a realistic raccoon. Is that just do your simple basic cuts then paint it in if you're a very beginner because you know trying to make a freaking like anyways well there's one rule I like to stick by when I'm wood carving is <laughs> you can't win them all you can't win them all I try to fail the attempt at um, you know making this broken wood two layers <laughs> I can't even look at this it just goes to show you guys that I'm as real as you so like you can see the inner layer where it's cracking there kind of <laughs> oh but I kind of needed this you know there's been a lot of shit going on in my life and uh I just kind of needed this <laughs> Stand by. Okay, so here's uh <laughs> What do you think about that one, Jess Carver? Huh? Looks like a little pig. Anyways, I got this uh, cheap Amazon wood burner. It's on my Amazon store listed below in the description. I like this one because just look for the blue one. I like, or it comes in orange too. I like this one because it's got a big thick foam handle and it never overheats. So. As much as I don't want to finish this, <laughs> I can't even look at it on the camera. I can't. As much as I want to <laughs> Okay, I'm not even going to look at it on the camera, so I don't even know if it's in screen. But uh, as much as it, I don't want to finish this, I think uh, maybe we'll do some wood burn. <laughs> we'll do some wood burning and then um, some painting. You know, this isn't going to turn out, obviously, but we might as well keep going. Show you guys tips about wood burning and, well, painting. Okay, so it's best to do this in a ventilated area. I do have the raccoon picture here, so um, to see which way the little things, the little raccoon hairs go, but uh, I don't know if um, it's going to work out that way, but this will just give you little textures in here. I don't even know if I really want to, well, I guess I should. You know what, like, I think you guys get it. If you do wood burning the, see I'm rushing it. If you wood burn the little hairs in, you could carve the hairs in. But this piece is getting so thin, I want to make sure that I don't want to cut through any of this. So I think I'll just kind of sit here, relax, burn hair the. This is this piece of cedar to start with. It's not my most favorite type of cedar. So let's do this. Let's, um, okay, so that's that. Then we got this here. Burn a little. Yeah, how about, um, so here's this little pig nose. You know, I have the complete choice. I don't even have to upload this video. So, It shows you guys that I'm not afraid to make mistakes, and I'm not a, I'm not a, afraid to um, show them with you guys and girls, if that makes sense. So I really don't want to do this wood burning on this. So I think um, maybe we'll just I'll sand it. Oh, you got to finish the friggin' wood burning, Jordy. You got to finish it. I'm going to be here for a couple hours doing this. Stand by.
so we got a new sticker on the wall two brothers one vision that's my uh buddy larry dibbs and his brother larry's a wood carver and stuff he does with his uh copper and his brother's a copper worker too or brass yeah copper so and larry's got a new youtube channel out too it's called i think it's called wowsy's workshop we'll talk about more about that on another video but you can i'll leave it i'll leave a link to his channel listed below wowsy workshop so what I did is I burnt around the outside. I burnt inside here. I sanded it to as good as I want. So at least you guys can learn how to carve like a piece of wood that um, looks like a nuke. Nicole. Oh boy. Looks like a friggin' Ewok. I gave it a bottom lip. So I just had a nice hot bath. I was thinking maybe I should paint it brown like an Ewok. Maybe I should paint it like green or something. Give it a different kind of thing thing. But you know, like, it doesn't make me laugh. It's kind of ridiculous now. So, um, I got black and white paint here. That's all you need for a raccoon is black and white paint. I got a small can of Coke. I'm going to uh, drink some Coke and eat this last piece of bur burnt bacon I got here. You guys like burning your bacon? I don't like uh, soft bacon because the fat's too gushy. I like to burn it. Anyways, let's see if we can save this and somewhat make it look like a silly. This is a caricature thing for sure. It's not a, it's not a real raccoon. It's like a character raccoon. It's, um, we'll think of a name for him. Or her. We'll think of a name for her. Bacon. Oh boy. So, if you look at a raccoon's face, it's basically mostly gray. Mix your paint ups. These are just uh, dollar store uh, paints. So we basically got a gray here. So let's go like, um, I don't know. Let's kind of go like this here. This is so we'll paint it gray, then we'll go white over top of the gray again after. Then we'll put some white here. Ah, oh, man, yeah, see, like, this is just, this is just, he's got his little lip there, little bottom lip thing. So how about I get this uh, painted gray, I'll let it dry a bit, and then, um, look at it, it looks, look at it, <laughs> maybe it's just leave it like that. Okay. <laughs> Nicole Wilder Newman. I'm not saying it looks like a raccoon. I'm not saying it looks like a raccoon by any means. But like I said in earlier in the video, paint may have just saved the day. For all you raccoon lovers out there. Paint may have just saved the day. It's a fruity, silly little raccoon. I think, I think, I think paint saved the day. Do you think paint saved the day? I think paint saved the day. Um, people are always bitching, like, um, not always, but once in a while, somebody's like, how come my wood spirits always look angry? How come I can't carve any um, happy looking wood spirits? Well, this is a happy looking raccoon, isn't it? Look, he got his bottom mouth open there. He doesn't even have any teeth. That's how old he is. He's super old. Raccoon has no teeth and he's super happy. There. There you have it. Okay, so I'm still not done this yet. Um, I got this uh, clear coat, this gloss. I'm going to go outside, spray it into this cup. I'm going to do the inside so it will darken the inside out. And it will make this somewhat shiny. Make sure your paint's dry before you use this stuff. And then um, 
I'm going to do a black wash over top of this if it's a raccoon. Okay, so I got the liquid sprayed in here. Um, I know 100% this is going to make it go darker. I'm not going to stain the outside of it. I just got this tape on the edge because, well, I'm a pig when it comes to this stuff and I drip stuff everywhere. So, and do this in a ventilated area, please. All right, so like my wood spirits, I just sort of put a hole in the back. People can put a nail in the wall and hang it. And even though it's not my best piece, don't forget to sign it, everybody. Here's a just carved Rob side view. So let's take a look at this silly little, we'll call this a silly little girl raccoon. You know, this this goes to show, like I think it's cute okay so this goes to show you you're gonna have stages of your carving that you're gonna think are completely ridiculous you know like I'm not bragging about this by any means you're gonna have pieces of your carving times when I had the laughing crack up that are completely ridiculous and you think you're just you're losing your mind and everything's out of control but as long as you push forward and you have confidence in yourself for the very beginners you guys i'm sure you guys could make something way better than this i, I think it's cute i'm pretty sure a lady would buy this actually when it's said and done and a hundred percent um if it was saved what do you guys think it looks like a raccoon the paint saved it so I got a really big, huge project coming up. It's, I'm going to be filming it. It's, a, it's going to be one of those, Jordy, um, what were you thinking? But first of all, Nicole, what do you think? I think there's lots of useful tips in this video, how, how to block it out and how to do your thing and cuts and different burrs and stuff like that. If you don't, have, if you, if you don't can't afford that, the Mampa set that's on eBay or Amazon, um, Sabretooth sells, um, Sabretooth, like, cut soles they sell the burrs too to make the uh, the round eyes you know also another thing too if you don't like the um is this thing is this, i gotta check this mic okay the mic's working another thing is if you if you don't like it glossy like that you can always cover it with a matte coat too right wait till this coat dries give it two coats of matte and it won't be so shiny but yeah i got a big project that coming up i'm gonna start it i was gonna start it tomorrow but i remembered buddy came over and picked up i got some new gouges that my um my my friend mike sent me he just shipped them to me they're old german gouges my uh a friend is doing the barter system with me and he he came and picked up the gouges today and he's gonna sharpen them he's a professional knife sharpener but he's gonna do my gouges for me and um uh, local people in the town here have a golf tournament so this is their trophy so he asked me if i can carve a golf club in this and make it flat and clean and nice looking and make the bottom flat i don't know what type of wood this is i think it might be birch but so that's what i'm going to do tomorrow i'm not going to film doing this um but i got a big project coming up and I'm going to film it. And trust me, it's it's going to be a nightmare video. It's, Jordy, what were you thinking? I hope it helped you, Nicole. And like I said, everybody else, you guys can, it doesn't have to be a raccoon or whatever this turned out to be. But if you look at it, I, I think it looks like a happy little raccoon. What do you guys think? See you later. Carving Fusion. Over and out. And no, I'm not a hummingbird. I'm a dinosaur bird. All right? Carving fusion. Over and out. Don't shit your pounds. Don't shit your pounds. Just carve up. Sorry. I know it never ends, but one more thing. I do suggest that you get like a 2x6 and do it with a 2x6. Go, go to your local hardware store and see if they have any cutoffs. You can buy for a dollar. If you got thickness here, you'll have lots more room for depth if that makes any sense, and lots more room to make mistakes. Carry on, Carbon Fusion, over and out.